Kia ora te whanau, a iho karaiti ko Andrew Double Dea ho. Our Gospel text for this coming Sunday, the 24th of March, is found in Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. It's the Palm Sunday reading, extremely well known, I'm sure, by all of us. So we pick up the narrative. When they were approaching Jerusalem, at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there tied a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say just this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people sp spread their clo cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they'd cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Now, I don't know how this strikes you, but there are some things about it that I find really quite interesting. The first is how Jesus is so intentional and strategic. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he knew exactly the response and the reaction that he was looking for. His choosing of a donkey was sending a very clear message that this was a fulfillment of the prophecy of Zechariah. And that the people understood it. They got it immediately. The moment this cult was drawn to Jesus, they knew what was going to happen next. They knew what was to follow. And they were ready for it. The prophecy says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you, righteous and having salvation, gentle and riding on a donkey on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The meaning was 100% crystal clear. The people needed no coaching. Their response was spontaneous. It was wholehearted and full-throated. We read what they did. They knew what to do. Can you see this procession as it comes down the Mount of Olives towards Jerusalem? People in the city would have heard it, and they'd have come out to see and to join in. Jesus had been, as I said, intentional and strategic. This was not a spontaneous event. This was not an accident. He had engineered it all. And then... He let the whole thing die. This is the peculiar bit about it. In this account, he goes into the temple, he looks around, and because it's late in the day, he does nothing, and he and the twelve go back up the hill. The crowd apparently have dissipated, just like the morning mist being burned off by the sun, and he returns up the Mount of Olives, presumably with the donkey, and returned it to its owner. I've just wondered whether Martha and Mary and Lazarus are actually the owners of the donkey, because they're the ones with whom he and his disciples are staying. So why does he do this? What is this about? It's not something so that the church could celebrate it in the two millennia since. The thing is that what we see next is that his next action was to clear the temple. 
to make space for his teaching, healing, and miracle ministry in the coming days. Remember, this is Holy Week, leading right up to Passover, to his arrest and um, trial and crucifixion. And perhaps he was putting the religious leaders on notice. I don't think he was, but he could have been. He could have been saying, I've got a strong following. Be careful how you proceed during this week. And he may have been simply giving himself some space. But more probably, in my mind anyway, he's indicating that he really was the one. The promised Messiah, the long-awaited deliverer. Yet one who would choose not to use the power that was his. Not to exercise his rights as ruler and deliverer. One who was willing to choose a different path and be a different kind of Messiah. And perhaps above all things, we're being told that Jesus was no helpless victim. Jesus was in charge of his own destiny. At any moment, he could put his hand out and take control. He has just demonstrated that by summoning the crowd. And yet, he's willing to give up his life freely. As he says, no one takes my life from me. I have the power to lay it down and the power to take it up again. This adds real strength to the sacrificial death of Jesus. Jesus does this on his own terms. This is his choice. This is his way. This is his sacrifice for you, for me. When we look at all the terrible things that were subsequently done to Jesus, it's so easy to see him as having absolutely no control that this was all done to him. Yet Jesus is making it very clear that this is his choice. He's giving permission for this. Nothing is happening that he does not allow. He has the capacity, as he says, to call on 12 legions of angels. And he chooses not to. Jesus is not the victim here. I think it's really important to understand that, that no matter how badly he's treated, no matter how brutally he's treated, no matter how abominably he's treated, Jesus is choosing the way of submission. He's choosing the way of forgiveness. He's choosing the way of love. That even when human beings do their very worst, the love of God triumphs. That God looks past it all, reaches toward us in forgiveness, with a heart that yearns to offer us a fresh start, a new beginning. That no matter how bad we've been, no matter how deep our offence, no matter how profound our shame and guilt, forgiveness, healing, Restoration, a brand new beginning, rich and full, are as close and available as our next breath. Amen. God bless you.